This is the third lesson in Beyond High School Math, and today's lesson is on integration using substitution. I might also recommend that you check out some of my other uh, calculus appendix notes that dealt with some university level math, including implicit differentiation, related rates, derivative of ln x, the derivative of logarithmic functions, and calculus logarithmic differentiation which are um, listed in the back of the good old Calculus and Vectors MCV4U textbook, but which are actually university um, lessons. So back today, we're going to talk about integration. We're going to start using the integration symbol, which I haven't used in the previous lessons on antiderivatives. So you've probably seen this if your teacher might have just started immediately with this. What you do need to know is that the integration of a constant times a function with respect to x is equal to the constant times the integral of the function with respect to x. So that's going to come up in our, um, in our substitution lesson today. So we're going to start by defining the substitution rule, which is basically a reverse chain rule. So let's start by visiting what the chain rule was. I'm sure you know it and love it and have great respect for it and use it very wisely by now if you've gotten to university. So if I had something like this, this is a function within a function. Remember composite functions that you did in grade 12 advanced functions. <clears throat> so you would say, uh, the function is the root of x and the composite part of it, or the g of x, would be x squared plus 1. So you could have said, well, f of x is equal to the root of x. <clears throat> Sorry, losing my voice. And g of x is equal to x squared plus 1. <coughs> Sorry. So that means that this composite function would be me substituting this g of x into uh, the root of x and replacing x with this. So if I asked you to take the derivative of this, I'm sure you would have said the derivative of y with respect to x, and you'd say 1 half, remember you're using the chain rule, so I take the derivative of the original function, so that's the root of x to the minus 1 half, and then the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. So when you when you um, simplify this, you would end up with just x times the square root of x squared plus 1 to the minus 1 still. I probably should have done that all one step. Or x over the square root of x squared plus 1. So that means, that means, we'll put that over here if I'm on the page. That means that the um, integral of x over the square root of x squared plus 1 dx is equal to the square root of x squared plus 1 plus c. Right? Don't forget, anytime we take an indefinite integral or an antiderivative, we must have that plus c. So you can see how we went from this backwards to this. But if I was given this equation, how would I know how to take the integral of it? So I'm going to jump from all of the lengthy explanation of how this all works to a general rule for it. So it's going to say that the integral of a function composite function, so it's f at g at x, g prime x, dx is equal to the integral of f at u du. So what's happening here now is that we're substituting in u for the original function. We're, we're making a substitution. And it's best to show you this with examples. And I think by the time we finish the four examples that you'll be you'll be off to the races on many of the questions that you have to do. So let's try some examples. Example one. Find the integral of x squared minus 5 to the power of 8 
2x dx. The first thing you want to do is to identify the two parts of this equation. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is that there are two little things here. There's a 2x dx and there's this x squared minus 5 to the power of 8. Now, if you remember with composite functions, this is the inside function raised to the 8th power. So I could say this is like x to the power of 8, and my g at x would be x squared minus 5, and I substituted that in. But what's really interesting to note here is that you're going to be able to see that the derivative of this part here, if I call this u, everything in the brackets, and I took the derivative of this, look, it's this, right? It's 2x dx. So this is, this part over here is the derivative of u. Now, sometimes they're really straightforward and you take the derivative and you get exactly what you want. In other words, what's here, you get exactly this and sometimes you don't. So we're going to do somewhere, it works really nicely, somewhere you have to do a little bit of manipulation. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to say, let's let u be equal to x squared minus 5. So that means that du is equal to, take the derivative of this, I get 2x dx. Now you might say, well, why is the dx over there? Wouldn't I say du dx? Yes, you could have said du dx equals 2x, then multiply by the dx. And that's what we want because we want to be able to replace this as du into this equation. So once I've identified those two parts, it's really easy for me to say, okay, well, that's just the integral of my u is x squared minus 5. So I'm going to call it u to the power of 8. I didn't really need those brackets there, but I put them in. So u to the power of 8, because I'm substituting at this, this all is my du. Now, you have to make sure that you don't have any x's left in your next line here. Everything has to be replaced nicely. Your du and your u clean this whole thing up to this very simple, easy to integrate question. So if I take the integral, remember you add 1, so that's 9, I divide it by 9 or multiply by 1 nat, ninth, and I would get 1 over 9u to the power of 9 plus c. So I'm almost done here. All I have left to do now is substitute back in x squared minus 5. So that's equal to 1 over 9 x squared minus 5 to the power of 9 plus c. Now you can see, you can always check. Remember, we always said when you're doing integrations, it's very easy for you to check your answer by taking the derivative because you are pros at taking derivatives by now. So 9 times this would give me 1, x squared minus 5 times 2x, bingo, here we have the answer. So that's all this substitution stuff is, okay? It looks like it's really complicated, but as soon as you start seeing a pattern, you're going to find that this is a really simple thing to do and a very effective and easy way to make your integrations much easier. Okay, so let's do let's do a few more examples. Question two. Uh, let's see what I got here for you. Okay, so this one is going to say, now you might want to stop as soon as I write out the question. So I have the integral of, in brackets, 8x minus 12 times 4x squared minus 12x to the power of 4 dx. Okay, so again, our goal here is to simplify this by finding a u and a du. So basically, it's always the more complicated one that has the exponent with it, because this is like the inside function, right? This is your g at x. So if I took the derivative of the inside here, look, I get 8x minus 12. So I don't need to do any adjustments to this. I just need to do a direct substitution. So I'm going to say, let u equal 4x squared minus 12x. And du is going to be 8x minus 12 dx. Now note again that I've made sure to include the dx here. 
because this whole thing, look, it's right there, right? 8x minus 12x dx, that covers this one and this one, and my u is just this 4x squared minus 12x. Okay, so now we're off to the races. We just have to plug things in. Let's hope I don't run out of pencil here. Oh, I need to go buy some more ink. Not ink, lead. It's not lead. Carbon. It used to be lead. Get lead poisoning. Okay, so here we go. This is my u. So I'm going to do the integral of u. Make sure you replace the power. u to the power of 4. And the derivative with respect to u. So du again has taken this away. My u went in here. Now, very easy. I add 1. That's 5. I divide by 5. So it's 1 fifth u to the power of 5 plus c. And finally, remember what I told you. You have to plug these back in. I'm going to save a little bit of paper by moving this up here. So that's going to be equal to 1 fifth. My u is 4x squared minus 12x. Don't forget to put it in brackets. And plus c. Okay, so remember to replace all your x's with u's. Find the part that you want to use for u. You can check it quickly in your head to see what kind of derivative you're going to get, right? Okay, so let's do one where you have to do a little bit of adjustment. It's not hard. Take a deep breath. Relax your shoulders. This all comes easier when you feel relaxed and calm, which sometimes you don't feel at all when you're doing math, right? Okay, so here it is. 2t, oh, not 2t. Where's my eraser? No, but yes, got it. I just wanted a 2 here. So I have 2 plus 4t plus 4t to the minus 3 all to the power of minus 7 dt. Okay, so if you look in here, if I took the derivative of this inside, and again, it's a good clue because it's inside the brackets raised to another power. So I'm going to write, you actually should say let u equal this. So I'm going to say let u equal 2 plus 4t to the minus 3. Then du is going to be equal to, the derivative of 2 is 0, and the derivative of 4t to the minus 3 is minus 12t to the minus 4dt. This time we had t's, not x's. Okay, so that's fine, except I have 3t to the minus 4dt, and I have minus 12t to the minus 4dt. So all is good with the exponent here, right? This, all this part here, the t to the minus 4 dt, this is all good, right? We like that. But the problem is that we need a positive 3. So how am I going to get 3t to the minus 4 from t minus 12? Well, that's just minus 1 quarter times that, right? So if I do, um, I'm just going to write a little note here, but we want 3t to the minus 4. Oh no! So all that means is that if we divide by minus 1 quarter du, that's going to be equal to 3t to the minus 4 dt. Okay, so now we have 3t to the minus 4 dt, we have minus 1 quarter du, and we're going to use that little rule that I said about an integral of a constant times a function is a constant, a constant times the integral of the function. And that means that I'm going to be able to put this minus one quarter out front here. So I'm going to do minus one quarter. The indefinite integral of, I replaced this, this is my u. So I'm going to have u to the power of minus seven du. So everything's with respect to u here now. I've gotten rid of all of the t's. That's very important. Okay, so just to make sure that I have room for question number four, I'm going to move this up here. Always make a little arrow and an equal sign. Okay, so to the minus seven, I add one. Don't go the wrong way. I did myself when I was doing this the first time, probably because I'm sleepy. 
So minus 7 plus 1 is minus 6. I divide by minus 6. That's going to give me plus 1 over 24. So I'm going to get 1 over 24 u. And I added 1, so u to the minus 6 plus c. And finally, all I have to do is substitute back in this u right here. I'm going to plug that back in right there. Okay, so in the end, I'm going to have 1 over 24. My u is 2 plus 4t to the minus 3 raised to the minus 6 plus c. And there you go. Wasn't that easy? Yes. And finally, I'm going to do another one that involves a little bit of help to make that du proper. So we can do the proper substitution. So it's... um. The integral of 3 minus 4w in brackets times 4w squared minus 6w plus 7 dw. Oh, to the power of 10. Okay, maybe you want to stop right here and try it on your own and then come back in two seconds and I will keep doing the magic over here. Okay, so I look at this and I say, okay, well, if I take the derivative of this, I would have 8w minus 6. Well, that's pretty close. It's, it's double, but negatively, negatively doubled, right? So I, I, can, I can work with this. I'm going to let u, let u be equal to 4w squared minus 6w plus 7. So that means that du is going to be equal to 8w minus 6dw. So I've got dw, 3 minus 4w, and 8w minus 6dw's. You might want to rewrite this like this, just might be easier to see. Should have this in brackets, maybe make it a little cleaner. Okay, so I can see that this is minus 2 of this, right? So if I do minus one half du, I'm going to get three plus, or sorry, three minus four w dw. That's exactly what I wanted because I want this to be the same as this. So I'm replacing this part here with one half du this time. Okay, remember you had to adjust it because the derivative of this internal function was not this. It's minus a half that. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that again outside the minus one half, out in front here of the integration sign. And I'm going to say u to the power of 10 du. I very simply add 1 to this, it gives me 11. Multiply 2 by 11, that's going to give me minus 1 over 22. Um, just a minute, did we do a half, minus a half? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. U to the power of 11 plus C. Last step, plug in the U. So minus 1 over 22. And don't forget, like I said before, you can always check all these, right? Oops, sorry, I was off the page a bit. Um, you can always check these because you are so good at taking the derivative. And there's your answer. Okay, so I, I guess that's going to be it for today. I do have more examples that I'll do probably in the next lesson, hopefully within the next day or two. I'm just really frantically busy these days, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, hope that helps you out. Um, let me know if you want me to do some more for you. Um, but like I said, I'll probably do, I have about another, you know, some with signs and some with ease and some with lawns. So, so we'll do those in the next lesson. Bye for now. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe, share, like, comment, and be my friend.